let's talk about what you can do with those half square triangles. I'm really excited about this. We have so many projects that you can do. Um, quilting, quilters love half square triangles because they are the, the best tool for just rearranging in different directionality, using different colors. You can create so many amazing designs in quilt blocks and then arrange your quilt blocks to create amazing quilts and or tote bags or placemats or table runners. And today I'm gonna mention um, an idea for a table runner for the holiday for Christmas. So the pattern that we're gonna talk about is a Christmas tree pattern. And here is what it looks like. Four by four rows of two and a half inch squares with half square triangles. Um, there's actually 14 that are the black and white half square triangles. And there are two squares that are solid black. Then in the top middle of the Christmas tree pattern, we have a yo-yo or a little rosette on the very top. It's yellow and that is the Christmas tree star. So this is a fun little project. It's um, not very difficult and it is something though that I think will make a good um, pattern to provide you with instructions that you can use without a visual. Many quilt books, most quilt books, and also um, even videos will refer to pictures for people to um, learn how to make particular quilt design patterns. And obviously, if you have low vision or you're blind, that can be very discouraging. So our, our goal is to provide you with instructions that you can follow either totally through the, the text or audio or by using a tactile guide. And we, we do have a tactile quilt design board that is meant to provide you with something that you can feel and you will be able to feel the design with your hands, um, much like someone with vision can look at the design with their sight. And I will have more information about that tactile design board below in the notes if you're interested. Uh, but for now, let's get on with the instructions. So as I mentioned, with the half square triangles, the folded half square triangles, the one of the pros about this for us is that the darker side is the raised half square triangle. So I can give you instructions that say, feel the half square triangle, and that means the raised portion of your half square triangle, and place it in the upper left-hand corner. So in that case, I would position the square with that folded side of the half square triangle so that it is in the upper left-hand corner with the apex of the half square triangle in the upper left-hand point and the diagonal of the folded half square triangle in that case would be going from the lower left to the upper right. So that's what I would that's what I would be telling you if I say, okay, position your half square triangle in the upper left hand corner. Now, if I wanted this, let's say I wanted this in my lower right hand corner, then I would say position the half square triangle in the lower right hand corner. Then I would expect the apex of this raised half square triangle to be in the lower right with the diagonal going from the lower left to the upper right. If I wanted it in the upper right hand corner, then I would feel the half square triangle in my upper right hand corner, that the raised portion, the point being the upper right and the diagonal would be going from my lower right to my upper left. And if I wanted it in my lower left hand corner, then I would say that the, half, the raised half square triangle should be the apex point should be in the lower left and the diagonal should be going from my lower right to my upper left. So that is how this half raised half square triangle is going to help you tap with your tactile reference points to position your squares 
to create the design of the desired design. So let's get started with the instructions for the Christmas tree square. We're going to, and I will also have these printed again in the notes below the video so you can reference them. So let's go over it here. And I'll be pointing to this diagram as we go. So you're going to be putting these square triangles together. And again, I had mentioned you're going to put 14 of the black and white half square triangles together. These are two and a half inch squares um, and the folded half square triangles. So you would need um, 14 of the white squares, two and a half inch squares, and you would need 14 of the black two and a half inch squares. And you would fold the black two and a half inch squares into a triangle and iron them as we mentioned before, and then clip them or pin them onto your underlying white two and a half inch squares. And then you would have two solid black two and a half inch squares that you will also be using. So your instructions will go row by row and you'll start with row one going from left to right on the top and row two below it, row three below that and row four on the bottom. What would be helpful is to have a separate box for each type of square. So I have my box one with one paper clip that has my solid black squares. Then I have box two with two paper clips with my half square, folded half square triangles. And then I have box three that has the yellow yo-yo that's gonna go on top of the Christmas tree. So I have that organized. And the next step we want to do is to, we want to position our squares into four rows of four, because that is going to be the quilt block pattern, four blocks of four, four rows of four, I should say. And we want to position each square in the appropriate directionality. So I'm going to give you those instructions now and I will write them below in the notes so that you can use them later. As you place these squares in the right directionality, we're going to want to um, have tactile indicators so that we always know what is row one, what is row two, what is row three, and what is row four. Uh, because once we put them together, and we clip them or pin them together, getting ready to sew, we'll be putting them aside and later we'll need to be able to reorient them in the right direction. So what we're going to do is as we do each row, I'm going to ask you to use safety pins or clips if you prefer. And as you um, are putting your row together, we're gonna to put one safety pin on the leftmost square of row one, two safety pins on the leftmost square of row two, three safety pins on the leftmost square of row three, and four safety pins on the leftmost square of row four. That will make sure that we have all of our rows identified and we know the directionality from left to right. The other thing we're going to do is as we're clipping these squares together. Um, we are going to be doing this using instructions that will um, guide us through the directionality of each of the half square triangles by feeling the half square triangle that is raised. So we are going to assemble the quilt block, as I said, in four rows of four. And you're going to start in the upper left hand corner. So we're going to take row one, square one, and that is going to be from your box with your solid black. So you're going to take row one, square one, and that's solid black. Since there's no half square triangle, there's no positioning. I'm just going to set that down. And we're going to put one safety pin or clip or to identify that this is row one, the left leftmost square of row one. Then you're going to take 
another square, and this is going to be from your box with your half square triangles. And you are going to position this with the half square triangle in the upper left. So it's going to be the upper left corner. And you're going to position that square directly beside the square that you just placed. Again, make sure that when it's laying down beside that solid square, you feel that half, raised half square triangle in the upper left corner. Now, get another half square triangle from your box, and this time we're going to position this square so that it is right next to the last square we placed, but with the half square triangle in the upper right. And we'll place that right beside the one that we just laid down. Again, the half square triangle is in the upper right. Next, another solid square in your box with the solid squares. And you place that right beside the third square that you had placed. So now you have row one laid out the way in the directionality it should go. And you should be pinning these together or using your little quilt tack to just get these to be um, connected from end to end. What I like to do is I start from my fourth square, so the last square I laid down, and turn it over like, uh, like I'm going backwards with a book page so that that fourth square is right sides on top of the third square. And I just pin those two squares along that right side so that they are pinned together. Then I open it up and I take the second square and I flip it over, or sorry, the third square, flip it over the second square and I pin the right side so that those, the second and third square are cooked together. And then I take the second square, flip it over the first square right sides together and pin the right sides of those. And now your row should be all pinned in the correct order and directionality. And we had the one clip that we placed on the first square on the left to let us know that square one in row one. So I'm gonna move that to the side and now we're gonna do row two. Row two, square one, you're gonna take a half square triangle out of your box, and the half square triangle is going to be in the upper left hand corner. So it's in the upper left, and I'm gonna place that down. And now I'm gonna take my second square, oh, sorry, and for the, because this is our first square in row two, you want to put two clips or two pins, safety pins, on this square to indicate that it's row two, square one of row two. <clears throat> now we're going to take your second half square triangle for row two. This is row two, square two. And we're going to put the half square triangle in the upper left. So again, in the upper left, and position it right beside the first square you just laid down. Get another half square triangle. And we're going to position this one in the half square triangle in the upper right. And we're going to put it right beside that last one. And then another half square triangle. And again, we're going to position it in the upper right, right beside the last half square triangle. And once again, you're going to pin these together, starting with your fourth square, flipping it back over. So that it's right sides over your third square, pin it along the right seam, and then your second square over your third square, pin it, and your second square over your first square, and pin it. And that is row two completed. And then set that right underneath row one to the side, and the clips or pins indicating the same rows should be on the same side. Now we're going to do row three. 
Row three, you're going to take the half square triangle again, one of your half square triangles, and the, the half square triangle is going to be in the upper left. Place that down. Second one, again, half square triangle, upper left. The third one is going to be the half square triangle is in the upper right. And the fourth one, the half square triangle again is in the upper right. And once again, you're going to flip over your squares. So four over three, so the right sides together and pin. Three over two, right sides together and pin. Two over one, right sides together and pin. And on the first square, you should have three clips or three safety pins to indicate that's row three. And then set that aside. And now row four, we are going to do the same thing. So you're gonna take row four, half square triangle, and you're going to have the half square triangle in the upper left. Put four safety pins or four clips on this fourth uh, row, first square of your fourth row. Take another half square triangle and put it right beside your first triangle that you left, just laid again with the half square triangle in the upper right, um, I'm sorry, upper left. Next one, the third one, you're gonna put your half square triangle in the upper right. And the fourth one, you're gonna do in the upper right as well. Again, you should have four clips or four safety pins in the first square in this fourth row. And that's your fourth row. So now, now that you have each of your rows done, you're going to take row one, place it on top, and then row two, directly under that. I'm not using actual sewn squares, so mine looks a little different, but you would be pulling your sewn squares together. So row two, under that. And then, so I have row one and row two, and I know they're in the right direction because I have row one with one clip in the leftmost square, and I have row two with two clips in the leftmost square. Row one is on top of row two on the table, and I'm going to flip row one down over row two, so horizontally, so that the right sides are together and I'm going to pin from end to end and then stitch across the, on the wrong side of the fabric across that horizontal intersection that's going across all four squares attaching row one to row two. And you're just gonna use a simple running stitch to do this. All of the stitches that we're using in uh, connecting these are the running stitch. So we're doing that and we stitch together row one and row two. Then we move that up on the table a little and we put row three underneath row two. And again, flip row two up over row three on top of row three so that they're face to face. And you're gonna stitch along the top of that intersection with the running stitch to connect row two to row three flip that open, then you can slide row four underneath row three, flip row three on top of row four, so right sides are together, and do the running stitch connecting along the top of row three and connecting it to row four, and then flip it open, and you've completed your quilt lock with your Christmas tree, um, aside from the little yellow rosette or yo-yo that we're going to place on top so that you can just stitch on top of row one you'll feel the second and the third square and on the top intersection of the second and third square it'll feel like it's coming uh, to an apex where the top of the tree is and that's where you'll stitch on your little yellow rosette or yo-yo. So that completes your quilt block and all done using 
these um, instructions that are provided via text, as I mentioned, I'll provide them in the notes below this video. And from there, you can use that quote block in a number of different projects. One thing that I thought would be really cute, these, if you use the two and a half inch squares, then your block will be, as I mentioned, around five and a half to six inches when complete. Um, if you use five inch squares to do this, so you have the five inch square and you fold it five inch square and a half to do the half square triangles, then your uh, block will be approximately, um, approximately 15 inches. And that would be a great table runner size. So create your Christmas tree quilt block. And depending on how long you wanted it, you could make, let's say four, four of them. Um, or if you have a long table or you want it longer, you know, just keep adding since they're about 15 inches and then you're going to be connecting them. So you'll want to have account for about, um, a, an inch in between each for each seam. But it would be a cute, cute table runner to have these Christmas trees lined up going down the center of your table um, just by connecting those quilt block squares and putting the backing on it with maybe some flannel, nice flannel lining in between. So that's one idea to use with this block. I'm sure there are many other things you could do with it. I hope you've enjoyed this. We will provide many more patterns and projects for you to work on uh, with this same type of technique. There are over 30 different designs we can do just with this simple black and white, or you can use other colors, uh, or half square triangles um, in this four by four row pattern. So stay tuned and please give me your feedback. Please subscribe and please share with your friends. Have a great day.